Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Blink and Sell Show with Mark. Celebrating its 10-year anniversary, dominating the podcast world. Now sit back and relax, and let's welcome your host, Blake, Sal, and Mark! I'm a man of reason, and they say tis the season to be jolly, but it's folly when you folly for position. Never in existence has there been such a resistance to ideas meant to free us. If you could see us, then you'd listen. Toiling through the ages, making toys on garnished wages. There's no union, we're only through when we have to competition. I toys, but I've got aspirations. They make some noise, your imagination. Girl, go sing, 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 to the Blake and Sal Show with Mark, episode number 486. I'm your host, Blake, and this past weekend, I actually pulled off a, something I've never done before, a double milestone Peloton day, where I actually hit 1,000 bike rides and 200 stunt classes in the same day, which oh. is insane to do that in the same oh. day. So that was fun. I didn't know that was a thing. <laughs> yeah. So I did that on Friday, so that was fun. Um, but let's um, bring on Mike co First of all, the biggest thing I'm podcasting, um, the man who's actually currently dealing with the work stuff, as we're doing this, all Thanksgiving week's fun. I was supposed to be I'm supposed to be off today. Supposed to be <laughs> off all week. And I knew this was gonna happen. And I saw the calendar and I, everyone and their mother took off today. Today's a Wednesday, the day before Thanksgiving. Right. Mm-hmm. And there's one client that not a lot of people knows. And I was like, I'm gonna get calm into working, aren't I? And lo and behold, the next day I get that phone call. Please, please, please. I have nobody to do this client, and of course they're giving me problems today on top of that. So, so if you sound distracted today, that's the reason. Uh, yes. that's the reason behind it. Just throwing it out there now. Let's bring Damn on bitches. our other co-host, <laughs> the man, the myth, the legend, the man who I'm I'm actually shocked decided to turn off Star Wars and come on off and do the show with us today. Mark that wow. height. Mm. May that force be with you. Um, Seriously, I'm sitting here. We're literally waiting. We're sitting here on Zoom, and all of a sudden I'm hearing. Episode three of uh, Revenge of the Sith in his room. It was his room after where I am. Well, I'm like, come on, we're waiting for you. Like, come on, let's do this. <laughs> no, actually, it was the clone, it's the Clone Wars. Okay, so you're watching a worse movie. You're watching oh, a worse no, movie. actually, the one scene where Yoda is battling... Uh, oh, Attack uh, of the Clones? Uh, Attack of the Clones? Yeah, Attack of the Clones. Oh, it's a terrible movie. It's a terrible movie. <laughs> oh, God, the, the best part is where you see badass Yoda with his lightsaber fight. And the guy's hopping around like a little bunny. Movie. Did they make it a less terrible movie? Uh-huh. Yeah, but that was the best part. Is before, like, before, before I run out of music, before I run out of music, I had to, I was like, quick music, quick music. Oh, I'll lose my favorite band. I don't think I've ever opened a show with this before. So this is Elf Lament by the Marinette Ladies with Michael Blue Blood. One of my favorite songs, actually, when it comes to quick music. So why the hell not? So that's what we're opening with today. Um. So, so th- th- and also a little disclosure for people while I'm listening, the AW, because we're doing this a little earlier than we had planned originally. AW is um, currently announcing the Continental Classic um, leagues as we're recording this. So I'm actually going to be taking notes and maybe I'll break in with information as things go along here. So I'm actually watching it on another screen over here. So are, are they kind of like taking a page out of New Japan's book while doing but, this? Well, from what I'm understanding so far, it's currently it's the blue the blue league is being. First thing, we're first, it's the Blue League, and um, Brian Daniels is the first person in it, obviously. So, like, we'll talk about that as we go along with the show. So, that's going to okay. be going out as we go. So, that being said, let's actually get started here. Help the Horton Show. Help have you can find the show and other products you work on at leeblakeandsalshow.com. So, uh, you can buy our shirts, stickers, hoodies, um, binders full of women, and more <laughs> uh, from our tea public store. Uh, click on the T Public link on our website or go to T Public and search the link as Show. 
Hey, did the uh, Blake and Sal show them work uh, ice scrapers come in yet? Again, get an ice scraper, put a sticker on it. Speaking of which, <laughs> I turn my background off. I actually had my work back next to me because I was literally doing work stuff right before we came on. So I actually have my work back next to me for a change. A wrong background. Let me go to the um, to my background here for a second, and I will show you my work thing. I always talk about my work binder. And here's our stickers right here. There oh, it oh, is. There it is. There it is. I have a sticker on it. On the back. I have other pocket stuff on the back, but ours is on the front. So. <laughs> I have a sticker on it, folks. So Naturally. I always joke about it. I always say it. But there it is. I actually do have it next to me for a change. And normally my work stuff in the living room, but because I was actually working right before we came on, I have, <laughs> actually had to have my bag next to me. So, all right. That being said, let's go to break. We'll come right back. Taste the biscuit. Taste the goodness of the biscuit. Taste the honey sauce. Taste the goodness of the biscuit with the honey sauce. You'll get that honey sauce on me. I don't like the way it tastes with my chicken wings. Taste the biscuit. Taste the goodness of the biscuit. Taste the butter spread. Taste the goodness of the biscuit with the butter spread. You get your butter spread all on me. I don't like the way it mixes with my mac and cheese. Because when you're at KFC, you got that special sauce to stir my curiosity. Just give me a five-piece meal. Oh, what a deal. A big old box, it's all for me. There's 68 seconds of your life, you're never getting back. <laughs> you're welcome. <laughs> Move over, Adam Sandler. There's a new Thanksgiving song in town. I, I get a message from Sal randomly the other day on Instagram. You, please play this on the show. Please play this on the show. Please play this on the show. I'm like, okay, I'll play. I'll, no context whatsoever. <laughs> it was no context. Not needed. <laughs> no more Hanukkah. Bring out your yarmulke. That's not now. We're talking about Thanksgiving week. It's Thanksgiving oh. week. Oh, I'm sorry. Hanukkah's not till December. I oh, yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah, get your holiday. Oy, oy, oy vey. Yes. <laughs> By the way, so the um. They've already announced um, they're doing the gold league right now, and they're really stacking this up tournament up. By the way, just want to note that they're really stacking this up. <laughs> how many how many leagues are there? There's two: the blue and a gold. And Mox and Swerve are now in the gold league. Yeah, oh. yeah. So that's they're really stacking this up. Like nicely done, nicely done. Hey, W here. Okay. Anyway, um, plugs. As always, go pick up Andy's book. I know I am available on Amazon, Barnes and Noble, and Arthur Publishing. I guarantee you there's probably a sale on Amazon because of Black Friday. So go pick it up. And I'm available in English and in Spanish. Go listen to the name, the Mandy Show, available on all podcasting platforms. I don't know what's going on with the show right now with the holidays and everything and Mandy's work schedule. If they do a show, I'll let you know. I don't have a clue. <laughs> so, so here's something funny. You know, how I always joke when, we, when I when I have to say I'm, I'm on a podcast. I'm doing a po- I'm on a podcast. <laughs> And usually, it's- <laughs> why did you just add a year to it? <laughs> I'll explain why. <laughs> so, I get, a, I get a message. I get a message on Friday from um, Leandra and Kelly over Rocky Horror Minute saying your episodes are going up. I'm like, episode one? Oh, shit. I forgot about that. I recorded epi- a couple episodes with them in January of 2021. <laughs> <laughs> Wow. So went up this Tuesday. <laughs> Tuesday the next, and the next episode going up next Tuesday. It has been almost three years. <laughs> and that's, honestly, that's a pandemic, Blake. And what the funny part was, the introduction is like Blake Riley from D5 the Mighty Ducks and the Blake is talking with Mark. I'm like, oh my God, I was still doing D5 at the time. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't done that show in two years. <laughs> Oops. Uh, yeah, Doing yeah, the yeah. D six. I thought that was hysterical. I'm like, wow. It's been two years since I've actually even said that. So so Sal texted me something earlier, right before, and I didn't find out time to update the run sheet because I've been so busy with work. So so Sal, what did you send me that you wanted to talk about here before we went into wrestling? Uh so uh TMZ announced today. <laughs> that, <laughs> yes, uh Daryl Hall is suing uh John Oates for something. 
it's not very clear. And there's some sort of a restraining order now. And yeah, I'm, I'm assuming it has something to do with royalties or something. So the two are on the outs. Apparently. <laughs> I, I would assume so. <laughs> Well, if you guys were planning on getting tickets for a next Hall and Oates concert, I guess you'd be waiting a while. Well, what's funny is you did you did you did just see you saw them because there was one of those shows that got canceled because of the pandemic, and you you and Mandy did see them. So right, you see them before all the shit happened. They were at that time. They seemed to be both on the same page and doing well. Okay, I'll give you I'll give you a hint to the wise. Um, and Sal will understand this reference. Mike and the Mad Dog. They were a popular radio show in New York for about 20-something years. They didn't speak the last three years of their show, but they did a radio show every single day. They didn't speak off the air for three years. <laughs> so, that's because they got along on stage. It's not really mean they were getting along. <laughs> so, just throwing that out there. I, I, I'm sure uh, <clears throat> things will get settled in court. Yeah, well, that's not our problem. But I do South Tech to me. I'm like, just tell Dad on the air because this is something I want him to know about. Wow. <laughs> I mean, all all these years of them working together and all the hits they compiled, now it's come down to this. Isn't greed a wonderful thing? Oh, before I forget, so yesterday they um they started in the end of the year stuff, which is funny because of what we're doing after the show. But um, they started announcing some end of the year stuff. And the um, Billboard put out the top 10 albums of the year. I think they're going to include December, but I think they're ending things early this year just so they can get ahead on things. And like, I don't even laugh because four of the albums were like Taylor Swift, but whatever. You kind of throw that comic. Number 10 surprised me. No, no, no. Number 10 surprised me. This is the point of the story. It had nothing to do with Taylor Swift. This is not the point of the story. Number 10 was Fleetwood Mac Rumors. (laughs) Yay. I was shocked. I was like, what? <laughs> wow. I did not expect to see that on, a, on, a, on the best of 2023 album charts. Like, that's a surprise. Well, I'm, ass- I'm assuming when she died, they probably got a lot of streams. Yeah, it surprised me, though. That was a nice surprise. Like, okay, cool. Like, all these all these articles on the Fleetwood Mac. I'm like, hey, what? <laughs> <laughs> I was just Fleetwood Mac on the charts and Glee did that tribute episode for the album. And that was, like, at, at over like, ages ago. Oh, the, like that was over a decade ago. So like that's the that was in the bef- that was in the before times. Yeah, like it's weird, right? Like it's so strange to see Fleetwood Mac there on the list. I just wanted to share that because I thought that was pretty amusing when I read that yesterday. So, all right. And now let's get into the crazy world of professional wrestling. Oh, quick update on the um, on the the um, C two as we're calling it now. Um, the the Gold Group the gold <laughs> is now. Uh, <laughs> John Moxley, Swerve, Roosh, Mark Briscoe, and Jay Lethal. Wow. Wow. Oh, really it eight? It's eight and eight? Yeah, it's eight and eight, I believe. Well, like I said, I, I'm typing this up as we go, and we'll do a full rundown at the end of the show, but we're getting updates as we go on the, on the C2. So is Swerve going to drink Moxley's blood? Uh, you know what? I, that match terrifies me. After seeing what happened on Sunday, <laughs> on Saturday, that match terrifies Oh, Jay White just got announced for the, for the gold block, too. Oh, wow. Oh. Jay, Jay Lethal versus Jay White is going to be so confusing for commentary purposes. <laughs> JJ. So, so who's winning? JJ. Oh, yeah, yeah. So, all right. That's that. I'll keep an eye on that as we go along here. I, you, I give them credit. They are stacking this, they're stacking this thing up. I give them a lot of credit for that. So, all right. Quick news and notes. First of all, um, we've, been, we've been talking about WWE going international last year. This year, they're umping the ante. Because <laughs> not only are they going to Australia, and, all the, and now they announce they're going to France. Um, that Yay. one, but last year was in Puerto Rico. This year is going to be in Leon, Leon Dico. I can't pronounce that. France. It's it's the the same that in Puerto Rico. And the fun part is because Sal is confused by this. When they go international, SmackDown is also going to be there. So it's going to be a two night affair wherever they go in these international cities in Saudi Arabia, which I think is pretty cool. I'm loving this. So, and if anything, we learned anything last year with the international shows, it makes for better TV viewing for us. <laughs> Indeed. We did really good shows, so I can't really complain. Bonjour. Yeah, so I'm intrigued oui, by oui. that. <laughs> indeed. indeed. <laughs> French <laughs> toast. French fries. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even want to yeah. respond to that. <laughs> how, about, how about a little poodle? <laughs> you mean a, a puddle from a poodle? What? 
What? What are you talking about? What are you talking about? Like a tinkle? Yeah. <laughs> if the poodle's got tinkled, then it's a puddle from a poodle. I think we have the name of our show. A poodle poodle tinkled and made a puddle. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> I'm writing down a time code first. Sorry. <laughs> poodle mania. There you go. Come on, catch up, Blake. Catch up faster. <laughs> poodle mania. Holy shit, I can't with you too. We were just getting started. We be. Just remember the French love Jerry Lewis. Oh my god. Anyway, I feel like it's appropriate to play a bunch of clips from uh, all that when uh, Pierre Escargot was in the tub. <laughs> hey, yeah. All right. Um, let's move on. <laughs> Um, next up, the story that I just put here because I want to get reactions um, because it's so stupid. So originally, I had typed in here, Ronda Rousey did an indie show. She was in Wrestling Revolver last Thursday, which is still a big deal. It's still a pretty big deal that Ronda Rousey doing indie shows now. She um, tagged with Rena Shafir against Athena and Billy Starks. That alone is a big deal. Mm-hmm. But then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, completely out of the blue, <laughs> on Friday when they're in L.A., she popped up in a ring of honor taping. <laughs> Which wow. I don't know where this came from and why. And there's no clarification of whether she signed an AW contract from TK or anything. Someone asked him and he didn't give any clarifications. I have no idea what any of this means. Um, any thoughts? <laughs> so I, I'm guessing, and I'm, I'm just spitballing here, that she got a like an appearance fee for being at the event. I hope so. <laughs> but I mean, if you look at the money she was making in WWE and, and now you got Ring of Honor, I mean, I I thought she was thinking about going back to uh, MMA. Oh, and... she's retired. She officially retired from that. She officially okay. retired. But to do Ring of Honor, I'm going. That surprised me too. At least it's like a tease to see how the crowd reacted to her for becoming AEW TV because nobody watches Ring of Honor. <laughs> or, as, or as Will Pruitt over at .NET says, there's no way Ring of Honor actually exists, as he says on every AEW closed audio show. <laughs> so, but no, that was one of those things like, what the fuck is going on? Like, this is so weird. And then the last story, that Sal texted me. I read it, and Sal texted me the next day, and I'm like, I'm staying, I literally knew about this, and I'll stay with it for the show. <laughs> but it's so ridiculous that I had to bring it up here. Seven Buck Production, which is the Rocks production company, as everybody knows. Yep. And Vice, who did the Dark Side of the Ring docu- docuseries, will team up for a docuseries covering, and I quote, the mysterious demise of WCW. <laughs> it's not mysterious. <laughs> I read. I That's what I said. There's a book out there called, oh, I gotta find it actually. It's a really fantastic book. I gotta find it one past I listened to during the pandemic. About the entire rundown of the beginning and end of WCW. It's not a mystery. It's not <laughs> at mysterious. all. Mysterious. <laughs> you had too many people putting their hands in the pot for too much money, and it just went downhill after that. I, mean, there's the a lot of, I don't know what the fuck this is about and why this is happening. Right? I mean, when you got the inmates running the asylum, what did you expect? Oh, my God. So that was Hulk Hogan. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, and Kevin Nash and all of them. Kevin Nash. Oh, here yeah. it is. The, um, the book is the um, I just found it because it's actually a really, really, really good book. Um, it's called The Death of WCW. By I'm trying to get the author up here. I'm live on Amazon. Oh, by um, my um, R.D. Reynolds. It's actually a really, really good book, talking about the entire history of WCW from the beginning all the way to the end. Like it's a really good book. So like I definitely suggest it if you really want to know the history. Or want prep for this stupid docu series that makes no sense. So all the other <laughs> docu series is basically let Eric Bischoff talk, and you got the whole thing settled right there. Yeah, I would love if they did this, and Bischoff's not even included in it. That would crack me up. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> that would be huh? so funny to me. Yeah, it would be a mystery. But here's the thing: you can't exclude Bischoff because he's a huge. Part I know, of it. I know that, but I would find it hilarious if like Rock doesn't get along with him. So he's like, no, I'm not doing this without him. <laughs> Jesus. That, would, that would that would totally be something that would happen. <laughs> Mystery. I love that. Mysterious demise. And, of and then, then, then after this, they're going to be doing 
the mysterious demise of ECW. That's called the Rise and Fall of ECW. That documentary is fantastic. That was fantastic. <laughs> oh. Anyway, let's move on. I just had to bring that up because it was too damn funny not to. <laughs> it was too damn funny. Isn't he working on the, the live action Moana movie there? Yes, he is doing that. Also, I heard Young Rock might get renewed on a different station. I oh. I heard that. Yeah. I, I like that oh. show a lot. So I like that show a lot. <laughs> I mean, it's not in my top five shows of the year, but I still like the show. You know, I, I wouldn't I wouldn't be surprised if we'll uh, hit to the year end show later. <laughs> it, it ends up on uh, CBS. I don't know. I'm interested. I enjoy the show. Like I really enjoyed it. It was hokey. It was silly. It was fun. It was like silly fun. Don't go into it expecting like a legit bit. Like this is the history of wrestling. Then you're going to enjoy it. One of those shows. You know what I mean? <laughs> so, <clears throat> all right. I made a joke about it already. AW full year happened this past weekend, and I know people are like up and down on like back and forth on this show. I enjoyed the show. I thought it was fun and worth the money. There's some things I'm picky about, and I'll get to them in a couple of seconds. Okay. But overall, I thought it was a good show. You know? Um, we'll start with MJF, Jay White, and Adam Cole storyline. I started in the pre-show. Which, by the way, can this be the dumbest way of setting up pay-per-view pre-show of all time? Here's the, here's the end of it. You may main event may not happen, but a pay-per-view! <laughs> that makes perfect sense! That makes so much sense! Of course it does. Hey, hey. I thought I didn't even think about that until like a half hour. Like, wait, did they just tell us that the pay per view main event may not happen? Is that what happened? <laughs> if we don't get no, our no, main no. event, we will riot. Like, I couldn't believe Card it subject to change, people. Card subject to change. Oh, yeah. I was just amused by that. But no, I, I, I'm on all. You could have done the J White MJF thing and not throw Adam Cole in here. I have no idea what Adam Cole is here. I have zero clue why it was involved in any of this. It made no I, sense to me at all. To me, it seemed like it was done like stupidly. No, <laughs> no, I mean, kind, kind of like uh, at the last minute, we're gonna like throw it up and see if it works, kind of deal. So, for those who missed it, um, I, I, um, MJF had a um on the pre-show. Defending the Ring of Honor Tag Team titles with the Mojo. Um, which, by the way, they didn't announce until the end of Rampage after Collision that nobody watched. So, <laughs> nobody watched it. So, Surprise! Like, I didn't even, uh, honestly, I didn't watch Rampage until maybe a couple hours before the pay-per-view. Just because I wanted to see if they had any other announcements for the show. I didn't only even watch it. But then, he here's <laughs> the strange part. is And a pre-show pre -pre -pre nobody knew about? Oh yeah, well, not only <laughs> that, but on, on that Friday you had to watch Collision first before you watched Rampage. Yeah, obviously that's how they aired it. That's how they aired things on television. That's usually the order you watch things. That it's not like anyone watched it because I don't know that even show the ratings for SmackDown, Collision, and Rampage. I sent up the style it was hysterical. SmackDown <laughs> had two point two million viewers on Friday night. Collision had two hundred and seventy thousand. <laughs> You can't yes. go head to head against your competition. That the favorite part about it, the favorite part, is Rampage rating went up. Not on my ten thousand, <laughs> but it still went up. <laughs> Just because SmackDown was over by then. Yes, <laughs> yes, yes, Al. Let's say that. Yes. <laughs> so, anyway, on the pre-show, um, MJF, the Mojo against the Guns. The Guns um, attacked MJF and. Busted up his leg, quote unquote, and then they had him get into an ambulance and yell, "Adam, don't let him take my title." Promise me. Um, what I thought was pretty funny about that was the whole thing that if he won, if he retained, it would have been his three hundred sixty fifth day of champion because it was one year to the day when you start Sal. That was literally one year to the day. That's right. So, fine. I had a cool storyline to throw into the show. What I didn't like made no sense. Was um Tony Schiavone coming out and saying since Jay White lost this since, since the match is canceled, Jay White is now going to be champion. Made no sense. So Adam Cole comes out and says, "No, I'm defending. I'm going to defend the title for MJF again." Makes no sense because <laughs> he's on crutches and and limping. 
<laughs> so then they do the full entrances. He did the full Adam Cole did the full entrance. <laughs> yes. He went oh, as, the full he's, entrance. As, he's, as he's coming down on crutches. Exactly. He did the full entrance. And then which I had no problem with them doing this. With the, with, what I would have done you take the whole Adam Cole thing out. You know, Jay White his entrance in the main event. And you say, fine, I have something in my contract saying if MJF doesn't show up, I win the title. And that, but you have to do, you do like the dramatic, the referee has to count a 10. And that is when you do the MJF ambulance coming down to the ring with an ambulance thing, which I thought that was cool. I like that. I thought that was really mm-hmm. old school. I like that a lot. But you do it that way. Like, it makes a lot more sense that way. Right. Right. You're following logic. It's just, that, that it's been done in the past. It's so, all logic. So <laughs> I, I kind of liked it how Adam, quote unquote, had his makeshift wrestling gear and like an elbow pad, and he brought brought in his crutches. My thing is, why didn't he use the crutch to hit Jay? I don't know. But actually, I got a better question for you. Okay. Why did the referees and security? Try to stop MDF coming to the ring when they let Adam Cole walk go down to the ring. Huh. <laughs> <laughs> question for you. <laughs> Maybe his earpiece came out. I don't like, know. It made no sense, right? It made no sense, right? <laughs> <laughs> no consistency whatsoever. So you, you're, you're going to let Adam get the schnapp be out of him as the referee stopping MJF? Yeah, that exactly. makes sense. Right? Makes yeah, no sense. That makes sense. So anyway, MJF did end up wrestling in the match. Um, He beat Jay White. With a bum leg, which is great for Jay White's career. It has it for his career. Can't even meet a man with one leg. And um but he, interesting contest. he did um actually hurt himself. MJF did get hurt. He actually had he um dislocated a rib, a rib a hip, and they had to pop it back in. And then they had he had an elbow injury that he had a minor injury, so he's not able to wrestle until World's End. So, Wonderful. So there's that. Um any thoughts on the actual match that occurred? I thought it was a fun match. I thought it was very cool. I thought the uh, uh, MJF actually, you know, doing something made it work for me. But I don't know. <laughs> Any thoughts on the match? Um, I mean, I could have done it without the whole Adam Cole thing. But, um, yeah. And can we, like, stop having him do pre-show and main event and for I agree. for you now? I 100% agree with that. <laughs> I 100% agree. My, I wouldn't even do it for World Dead. I know it's his home, his hometown and his home building. I wouldn't do it there either. Right. I just... <sighs> Tony Schiavone and in that situation, my whole thing is you, number one, you didn't need Tony Schiavone. All you had to do is keep him in desk and say, I'm getting news from Tony Khan. Well, Here I, it I, is. I, I, you could have cut that entire thing. You could have cut the whole thing and just waited for the main event. You know, I mean, if you did it that way, this, that that part of the storyline just seemed like it was all thrown together at the last minute. And Adam Cole just happened to be backstage, and he go, "How about we do this? Are you good for it? Are you in?" And Adam be going, "Uh huh, uh huh, uh huh." I, you know, it was just that part. Just no, I, it it didn't make sense. And and Tony before he gave the green light should have thought about it. So, it just right. it, it, to me it just kind of made the main event a little less exciting. But, I mean, you're not wrong. You're not wrong. Sorry, I just, they just finished announcing everything. Classic. Sorry, they just announced they finished announcing everything. We'll talk about it after we're done They just finished announcing everything. Um. Anyway, they're announcing matches now for for some tonight night night and collision on Saturday. Anyway, sorry. Um. Let's move on to the. Texas death match that everyone's talking about. Well, wow. <clears throat> okay, I'm gonna say something because uh, my boss um called me about something else because he's a big wrestling fan. He's like, "Did you see the Texas death match?" And my exact reaction to him, and I'll say it here, and I said it in the moment. That happened. There's no response. I have no comment. I have no response to it because that was one of the weirdest and most bizarre things I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> that was one of the craziest things ever. So, like, I literally don't know what to say to talk about it. Um, Sal, I'll start with you. Maybe you have more words than I do, because I am dumbfounded by this whole thing. <laughs> um, I thought it was great. It was very well done. Uh, it was just a little too much at the beginning, but 
it was good. I liked it. I I never realized I enjoyed death matches. <laughs> 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 I mean, it seems like every time they do a death match, I'm like all for it. See, and see, I was in the point where I'm like, okay, fine. It was fun. The storyline was fantastic. You know, I am a story person. Like, you're going to do a second match, at least have a story. It's not a fucking story to it. But like, you know who I am with stories. I don't know why people are ranking into the top five match. I, 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 today, people are saying five stars, five stars. Like, did you watch the same match I watched? Like, did you watch the same thing I watched? Like, I would never put that up as five stars, like, ever. This is my personal opinion. Like, I wouldn't do that. It was one star for every two staples. Oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, I don't know. I, Dad, what do you think? You know, the, 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 yeah, I give him credit for the storyline issues. Is okay. I understand that we've had this match because Adam, um, Adam Page felt that he's been violated and his family's been uh, messed with. And I understand it that you, being a husband and father, kind of want to, you know, give a swerve of what for. And I'm all for it. Believe me on it. I'm all for it. Anytime that you can basically kick Swerve's ass, I'm all for it. I just think that it went to an extreme that I don't think some people were ready for or expected. Uh, and when did uh, Hangman Page become part vampire? Yeah. Like, I've watched I watched many a Nick Gage um, street um death match. And I've never seen anyone ever drink somebody's blood like that. I've never seen that before. <laughs> I, I, I mean, I'm pretty sure it wasn't real. I mean, it was the color um, just wasn't right on no, it. No, actually, from what I've heard, that was legit. No, that was legit. That was legitimately his blood, from what I've been hearing legit. from behind the scenes. Uh, I believe it. Broken bears. I think, I don't know. There was a lot of blood. There was I, a lot of blood. I, I mean, I, Sal, there was still blood. They bled through the mat. Because you saw they pulled the mat off, and it was still blood on the next mat below it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, uh, uh, Swerve getting opened up like that, and then Paige getting open. I mean, it was just, to me, you could see that um, Swerve had to basically take his hands and basically get the blood out of his eyes several times so he couldn't see what he was doing. And uh, Adam, well, she's how many types of different configurations of bob wire can you use true you're not wrong my you know favorite I mean? part was when he hit him and then it wrapped around his head and then scratched his face oh yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah it kind of partially went into his mouth yeah yeah that was, just... yeah, that was great but bravo you know, the, the, the 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 part with the black bag and then, you know every time you see a black bag you're expecting thumbtacks and then when it's glass, okay? But here's the thing. Even though it's prop glass. I think it was sugar glass. It was sugar glass. I'm yeah. pretty sure it was sugar glass. They yeah. still got cuts, and you could tell on the small of the backs, you still got cut because it's still sharp enough to do that. So, I mean, even though there are built-in safety precautions, you can still get cuts and bruises and everything else with this. And for both gentlemen to walk away as as much as they were able to, it's just that they have mutual respect for each other to not further injure each other in this type of match. All right, let's move on. We had two women's um, title changes happen throughout the show. Um, I'll go with the one that we um, both of them we kind of kind of predicted last week. I'm not gonna lie, we both kind of predicted them. But um, I'll start with Julia Hart. Um, winning the TBS championship, I, she deserves this title reign. She deserves this title. I really enjoyed the triple threat match a lot. Like I thought it was a lot of fun. Well done, well wrestled, and I think Julie Hart deserves this one. Dad, go ahead. Uh, yeah. It seemed like for most of the match, Chris was gonna. You thought Chris was gonna win again, and then uh, the unknown factor, Sky Blue, kind of made a difference. And uh, I that was the big difference maker. Now, here's the thing. Are we going to get a Sky Blue Julia Hart match right off the get-go? I don't see why not. I don't see why not. Is that your thoughts? Uh, yeah, I guess. I mean, it'll give uh, Chris Statlander a little bit of a break. 
And um, I mean, you already have some sort of a thing going on already. So why not put those two together for Very a little true. feud? And then we'll talk about the big one. Timeless Tony Storm is now the AEW Women's Champion. Tony Storm now a three-time champion. Um, I love it's this match. I, I love this. I know it was hokey. I know it was stupid. I know it was over the top. <laughs> I just love this character so much. And the fact that he put a shoehorn in the back of her tights and it kept sticking out of her ass. Might be one of the funniest things <laughs> I've ever seen. <laughs> one of the funniest I've ever seen. <laughs> That's only because he put it in upside down. I cracked up laughing at that. But no, I really enjoyed this. I'm happy for her. I don't know what's coming next, which I actually don't mind. I'm still good. Um, she is the unsung hero of 2023. And we keep complaining about that women's division over there. Unfortunately, she's just not enough. But if she wasn't this timeless character, I mean, we wouldn't be talking about any sort of AEW women's division right now. She is carrying whatever little bit of whatever they have right now, and it's fantastic. Now, I gotta admit, you're not wrong. What's funny about it is we have Tony Storm, who is like a wrestler who's been wrestling forever, literally forever, doing mm-hmm. a brand new character that everyone is in love with. And then you have Julia Hart, who won a championship, who is the youngest AEW champion of all time. And it's crazy. Like, I, it's not so where we are here. But yeah, time is really amazing. I'm happy. I'm really happy. This is the thing. Um, Dad, any thoughts? Um, Tony Storm's character kind of makes a lot of people wonder, and I think that's the whole part of the gimmick is to make people wonder as far as, you know, is she really off a rocker or is this a phase she's going through or, or what, you know, it's a little bit of everything and it makes you think, and it makes you want to watch the match. So, I mean, kudos to that. Um, I would love, love to see Ruby Soho go against Tony storm for the belt. I'd be I think that, that would be a great man. I'd be that a lot, actually. It'd be fun. It'd be a lot of fun. Um, so any other thoughts on the pay-per-view itself? I'm I'm good. Sal, any other thoughts? Um, no, I, it was highly enjoyable. And um, yeah. Do you have any other thoughts? Uh, I would have to probably give it like a, a B plus, A minus. Uh the Young Bucks match with Jericho and Kenny Omega, I thought was uh, okay, well done. And when the Bucks lost it, that goes to show you what's going to happen next. So stay tuned. The ride for the, with the Bucks are, is not over yet. So, I mean, if you can't figure out what direction they're going to go, you're either blind or you're not paying attention. Or you're on TikTok turning the show without even watching the match. That also <laughs> <laughs> so, all right. Um, so before, before we get to WWE, I do have the official blocks for the Continental Classic. By the way, it's six and six, not eight and eight. Yeah, because I thought it was only supposed to be 12. It's 12. It is 12. Okay. Six and six. Right. We have the official lineup. Here we go. Um, so, before we get to this, can I say, I hate the fact that the only thing they messed up here is they're, ma- they're making it a triple crown championship, which is so stupid to me. With the Bring of Honor Championship and the New Japan Strong title, and whatever the hell's going on with this, I think that's stupid. I'm going to throw that out there now. I think tournament's going to be a lot of fun, but I think that part is stupid. But All anyway, right. um, here we go. Announced for the AEW Continental Classic. Here we go. Gold League: John Moxley, Swerve Strickland, Mark Briscoe, Roosh, Jay Lethal, and Switchblade Jay White. The Blue League: Brian Danielson, Andrade Ulo, Brody King, Claudio Castagnoli. Eddie Kingston and Daniel Garcia. Oh, hmm. now Eddie's winning that one. Wow. That is the lineup officially. Um, thoughts? As this just broke as we were doing the show. <laughs> huh, Daniel Garcia. That That's kind of like with all the names that you wrote off, that's still kind of the well, one that you put I, a I look at it this way. I look at it this way. G1. Mm-hmm. Tariano. That's all I gotta say. 
Okay. We can deal with Yano every G1. We can deal with Daniel Garcia, who actually can wrestle more. Okay. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. <laughs> um, Indeed. I would I would love Daniel Garcia to basically tell uh, Matt Menard, Danny Magic, and basically that they'll go shove it and leave me alone uh, so he could actually wrestle. And I would love to see the implosion of that. I, I really would because I think uh, it's time for Daniel Garcia to basically show off what he can do instead of being held back. Um, also, quick, quick, um, 20 minute time limit on matches. Um, three points for a win, one point for a draw. And um, everyone is banned from ringside from every factions, from all factions. Good. Oh, that's good. So that makes it interesting. Um, so far, the, and the matches that right now, obviously we're doing this before Dynamite, so the matches have already happened by the time people hear this, but I'll say it anyway. Um, John Moxley versus Mark Briscoe. Swerve versus Jay Lethal. Roosh versus Jay White. <laughs> oh, what? Matches that, well, they have to, everybody has to face each other. Everyone's got to face each other. Okay, so finally. That's the first match. Those are the first matches that are happening on day mm-hmm. one. Collision's going to have the second night of matches, and I can't find the rest of the lineup, but they have Kingston versus Brody King on Collision. Nice. I can't find the rest. I'm trying to find the rest of the matches for Collision. But, um, yeah, I'm intrigued. I'm intrigued by this. Um, I, I think this is going to be a lot of fun. Here we go. Daniel Garcia versus Claudio Castanoli. Whoa, ho, 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 ho. We're, wait, we're going wait, into the de- Daniel Garcia versus Claudio Castanoli. Nice. That's a, that's Throw the, the kid into the having. deep end, eh? That's the first match you're having. And I guess that leaves it with, um, I don't know if Daniel Sick can wrestle this week. I don't know if he's clear to fly yet. I don't think yeah. he's going to fly yet this week. So I think it's supposed to be, I think the only other matchup left would be um, Andrade versus Brian Danielson, which is not announced. I'm assuming it's because Brian can't fly yet with his um, optimal issue, with his issues. Yep. But um, yeah, that is a constant of the classic. I'm intrigued. I think it's going to be fun. So there you go. That's that. I just wanted to make sure we got that out of the way now because they just announced everything. So I figured, why not? Let's get it on the air right away. So you don't, we don't have an, we're not going to be able to talk about it after this. So. And, and, and do they get a nice traveling trophy like uh, the Heritage Cup? Based on the based on what I've seen, it looks like another title belt. Okay, which sucks. Really? <laughs> uh-huh. yeah, need... they, yeah, from the from what I saw on YouTube, it was Stefani and Tony Khan announcing everything, which I had no problem with that. That was actually pretty cool. But they had like the Ring of Honor title on the left, the New Japan title on the right, and they had another belt covered in a black carp in the middle. Just so we need one more oh. belt. There's that. All right. That being said, that's AEW. Let's move on. Any few the playback Sabbath is good enough for me. I'm not gonna lie. Um, <laughs> I'm not gonna bullshit you there. Any few the playback Sabbath. Um, hey. Survivor Series War Games is this Saturday. Obviously, are these teams? He's like, again for second year in a row is War Pigs by Black Sabbath. Okay, any excuse to play this is good enough for me. Um, this is going to be one of our fastest previews ever because there's only five matches for the show. Because obviously we have two war games matches, so we only have five matches enough for the show. Okay, this will not take us long to get through at all. Um, first things first, we have Santos Escobar taking on Colito for the Pride of Ready Rey Mysterio. Apparently, that's what we're doing. Um, okay. what? I said okay. Yeah. Well, from the time we didn't see some Santos. Um, jumped Rey Mysterio because Rey had to go off and have surgery. So they wrote, wrote him out by Santos turning on him. Which makes sense. I mean, it's a good, very old school. Very, very old school to have an actual legitimate injury. right? Put him into a storyline. I like that idea. But um, the one thing that did that one thing that they didn't do, they did do here, is they actually officially had the LWO break up because Santos even beat up his own um, El Fantasma, El Fantasma um, group. Everybody. And he yelled at Selena and everything. Like he broke up, he broke up the LWO. Oh, he left the LWO. So Carlito is now fighting on behalf of Rey Mysterio. Um, okay. I hate the theme music, by the way. I hate the theme music. I, but anyway, um, I, go ahead. I I kind of see things happening in the works that I think uh, Santos' old faction it, it will be reunited. And... I will say it was nice to hear the old um um old theme music. 
on SmackDown this week. Like I, I haven't heard the that music in a while. I'm so happy to hear it. I I, I think you're gonna see the reformation of uh, Santos uh, faction. Okay. Um. So I I'm going with Santos to win it because it makes the most sense. But I it could go either way, Sal. Yeah, I agree. You're not gonna turn somebody heel and then make them lose their first match as a heel. So you're not wrong. Right. Um. That is confirmed. Yeah, and I I probably see. One of the former members of LWO and probably Selena Vega coming in to try to give more support for Carlito, and then something goes wrong. So, all right. Um, by the way, I, I do love the fact that because of Judgment Day, I made their stuff purple on our run sheets, which it makes me it just makes, it does more for me, makes me laugh. Um, <laughs> um, Women's World Championship, it is Rhea Ripley actually defending her title um, against Zoe Stark. I, I like Zoe Stark, but yeah, his sends no chance. She's getting creamed. I was betting a good match, but there's no way Rhea's losing the title, right? None. Nope. No. No okay. way. So, speaking of matches that are very predictable, but I'm looking forward to seeing at least third WWE Intercontinental Championship match. It is Gunther taking on the Miz. Not gonna lie, I like this matchup. I like how we got here. I like the fact that the crowd naturally turned to his face because he's facing Gunther. I like that. <laughs> but, um, my, the funny part is Michael Cole. I, I didn't catch this live, but I heard it on a recap the next day. Cole pretty much said that the Miz is, is going to try <laughs> against Gunther, which cracked me up. Laugh, cracked up me up. <laughs> so that if that doesn't come because Gunther's winning, I don't know what is. <laughs> I don't know what doesn't tell you. No. Yep. Yep, I agree. <laughs> I told you it's gonna be easy. No, I'm dead. Uh it's it's you know, Miz better bring uh Maurice and the two girls with him. I wouldn't even do that. I would not want my I would not want them to watch him get his like chest blood. You it's know I, I guarantee I... within the first five minutes of the match, you're gonna see welts on Miz's chest. I think the video package might last longer than the than, than, than the time we'll have Waltz on Miz's chest. Like, <laughs> I, I, I don't see this being I don't see this being a long match. I see it being over in about ten minutes. That's long, actually, for longer than I thought it was going to go. <laughs> longer than I thought. And, and, and nine of it is going to be Miz going. Ah! <laughs> so, all right, let's get to the War Games matches, the important matches, the ones everyone cares about. Um, the women's match. It's I just realized I, I forgot to change the color for Becky. Um, damage control, Bailey, Eos guy, Oscar, and Kyrie Sane. This is so weird to say. Oh, really weird. Um, versus Bianca Belair, Charlotte Flair, Shotzi, and Charlotte called in a favor. Raw's Becky Lynch. This I, I'm looking forward to this. It's only because this is, this is a lot of a lot of women in that match that I really like to see wrestle, and I'm intrigued by Bailey going forward after this. But I have a feeling Shotzi's in here to get pinned. <laughs> Well, whatever the stipulation is, the high end match, I think Shot is in here to get submit and be the person to take the fall. There's no other <laughs> Shot is in there. With that terrible hair. Like, I don't understand. The only reason Shot is here is to take the fall. Am I am I in agreement with this, um, Dad? Um, I would kind of point it in that direction, but I just add something just kind of crop up is that. What if Bailey's the one that basically submits and causes the damage control to have this meltdown and then they kick Bailey out and now Bailey's the odd man out and she's the she's not no longer the huntress, but now she's the prey. You know, it's funny. I, I don't expect Bailey to be part of damage control like before the end of the year. Like, I have her to be out of this group like on the last match out of the year. I kind of expect it, whether they win this match or not. You know what I mean? Just personally, I think that's what's going to happen. So, um, Sal, what do you think? Yeah. Um, I feel like she's kind of like, you know, one of these things don't belong kind of a deal. I think how this is the only group? person in the ring. A funny part is that you didn't see SmackDown with the segment where Bailey's the only one that doesn't understand Japanese in the ring because even Dakota speaks Japanese. So, like, no, she's the only one that doesn't speak Japanese. She has no idea what they're talking about. 
I'll be talking shit about her right next to her. She has no idea. And, and the, <laughs> yeah, yeah the translating for her. And it's like, no, yeah. but I love the fact that that could be what's going on. Like, you have these, these Japanese women that probably don't even like her talking shit about her, but she has no idea. <laughs> She's so close. <laughs> so, so South, who's winning? Um, hmm. Hmm. I would assume damage control. So I'm going with damage control. Fair enough. Let's get to the men's match. We have the Judgment Day. Um, Damian Priest, Finn Balor, Dirty Dominic Mysterio, and now JD McDonough. And Drew McIntyre, who said, I'm not a, I'm not a part of the Judgment Day, but I want to I want to get them to use to win a cage. Well, that's great logic for me. Not gonna lie. <laughs> great logic. I'll take it. Um, versus Seth Rollins, Cody Rhodes, um, Jey Uso, Sami Zayn, and the returning Randy Orton. Um, uh, Sammy, start me. Yeah, you. Mm -hmm. Oh, sorry. Um, (laughs) thank you. Um, why are we having Randy Orton return from injury and probably one of the most dangerous matches they do? Fair question. I don't have an answer to (laughs) you. asked me that question on Tuesday, and I I don't have an answer for you on that one. (laughs) Um, so. Because Cody Rhodes is in this match, fuck Cody Rhodes, and Randy Orton is returning, I'm pretty sure they're not going to make them lose. Thank you very much. So I'm going to say the other side, non judgment day. Non judgment yeah. day. So you think the Cody team, day, yes. Cody's team, as as um as Rich Pants said and everything today, Team Cody. <laughs> That's good. Uh, okay. Yeah, team Cody. Um, can I just say? This might be the most well put together board game match they've ever done in WWE or NXT. Because this is literally a storyline that had been going on for like close to a year. If you include like Jim Drew and like Jay and Sammy and that whole thing, like they've been just setting this up for a year, which is crazy when you think about it. I like that. Mm-hmm. You know, actually longer than a year. Because when was that? Um, when was that match between Drew and Rowan? Like they even go further back than before Survivor Series. Like. Um, so I appreciate that. I really appreciate the fact. And I also like the fact that they made GD be on a part of Judgment Day officially. Because he's been hanging out with them enough, so why not? I, I kind of uh, I'm torn. Because you have to you can go two ways here. You can go Damian Priest, um be the one that loses, and then everyone's pissed at him. Or you could have Drew be the one that wins the match for them, and then Priest is pissed because someone else that's not in Judgment Day won it for them. I I can see that. Yeah, you're right. So there's, two I also, there's two ways. I go. wanted to also I forgot to throw this in too. I think this before. is the perfect opportunity for him to cash in. That I've heard that before. Did you do it during actually somebody throw out a theory? I forgot who said it. Oh, I'm told you audio tomorrow. I forgot who said it. That you have priest um priest I'll start the match. And then you have like Jay start the match on the uh, you pre-start the match on like Jay or something, and then you have it coming down to two on one. Have Seth come out next. And in the middle of the match, because technically the match is the start till all 10 men are in the ring, you have a cash in and have Drew have um Priest win the title. In the middle of the actual setup before <laughs> the match begins. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know who said that, but I love that idea. It would never happen, but I love that idea. No, no yeah. that, that wouldn't happen. But... <laughs> I absolutely love it though. Like it's a great idea. <laughs> it's never been done before. So like <laughs> So anyway, um, I, yeah, I, I, I think I'm gonna go in the other direction. I'm gonna have uh, Cody's team come up victorious because you're gonna have returning Randy Orton put an RKO on JD McDonough. Okay, I, I don't remember. Is it submission only? I always forget that part. I, I no, this pinfalls. It is pinfalls. I always forget. I'm not gonna lie. I always forget. I don't yeah. want to and yeah. then they went back and forth with the rules. I don't remember what the rules are. <laughs> I mean, yeah. that, like, no one confuses me. I didn't know there's no escape. That much I know. There's no escape because if you escape, yeah. you get disqualified. That much I know. You know what I mean? Which I love that rule. Not gonna lie, I love that rule. I can't have any other pick yet. Um, I guess. And Sal, the point when you won't bring Randy Orton back here and have him lose in his first match back, and Cody's not going to lose the match. Like, it's a tough one. 
And there's nobody like in the women's match. There's an obvious person for me to taking the fall on the face <laughs> side. You know what I mean? But on the on this side, even Jaden McDonough to me, I don't see him taking the fall because like he'll be someone he'll be breaking up falls. I can see him being the one that breaking up falls with weapons and all that stuff. I can right. see him doing that. Well, but I- at the same time, I don't see Team Cody losing. So <laughs> I just don't. I don't see the losing. <laughs> I don't see Dominic getting pinned, uh, and I don't see Finn getting pinned. So Actually, I, think Finn, I think Finn's the only one on that team I can see being pinned. You know, <laughs> He's the <so>, only one. <laughs> so here's the thing: is you got JD, who's the new kid on the black. Let's throw him under the bus. True. I- I'm going to go with Team Cody, but I actually am going to lean back to my original thought of having Priest be the one they hate to fall, because that'll add up to be a fantastic storyline. That could be a great story for later. That'll set up Mania. Because I wouldn't be shocked uh-huh. if they do that and they do like Priest versus McIntyre at Mania if, Priest, if McIntyre is still here. You know what I mean? Like you can do that. Like that would be uh-huh. great. So let's do that. I think that's where I'm going to lean. I think that's where I'm going to lean. So that is it. That is our show for this week. We covered a lot in an hour. So let's um get out of here. Sal, what are we closing with? Since I said, let me correct the song. What are we closing with? Uh, this is Straight No Chaser with Kristen Bell, and it's Text Me Merry Christmas. The very millennial title for a song. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, take it away. Go. Uh, for more information on our show, including where you can find us on social media or watch show on YouTube, uh, go to the Blake and please, and please, 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 please don't forget comment or leave a rating and review, and we will read it on the show. I, I'm I, I smell something and I turned around and she's making mozzarella sticks behind me. <laughs> oh, can I have one? Exactly, just making mozzarella sticks. Like, okay, cool. I'm down to say your thing. Hey, as always, it's been your pleasure. And uh, if you happen to have a local wrestling independent organization, you live at, please patronize these people. These are the young men and women coming up in the world of professional wrestling, sports entertainment. They want to show you what they can do as far as their character gimmick. Their moves, their finishers, their promos, the whole package, because what they want to do is get to the next action line and grab that brass ring for a major wrestling organization. And they can only do that if you come and watch them and be entertained by these people. So please patronize these people, do it responsibly, but have a good time doing it. And as always, let's just be a little nicer to each other, please. We've only got one world. It's all we got. Well, um, fuck them kids. Um, so <laughs> wait. <laughs> Next week is going to be a brand new episode of Fuck the Policy. Me and Mandy have a lot to talk about, so we're going to sit down and do that sometime this weekend and record an episode and put it up next week. Week after, three of us are going to be back for the last time in 2023. Last time in 2023 in two weeks. But we're going to have Kelly Wells here, and we're going to preview Deadline and Sal's favorite match in the entire world, the Iron Survivor Challenge. <laughs> <laughs> I still I still don't get it. Um, think about, about the King of the Mountain match, but less confusing. <laughs> and, and, and no guitar shots. And and and, and um, you know, the pony box. I can't even do the pony box. It's, pony box. it's not a reverse ladder match. It's not a reverse ladder match. Oh, my God. Anyway, oh, TNA was fun back in the day. Anyway, um, that means you get out of here. I'm like, I'm so. I'm Mark. And you're listening to the Legacy Sound Show with Mark. Have a good day, everybody. Hey, we love you guys. See ya. Merry yeah. Christmas. Thank you so very much. Goodbye. Mwah. And good night. Bye-bye, bitch.